Welcome to the latest edition of Plank of the Week. Here we are at the headquarters of Talk Radio TV. I'm in the company of Dawn Neeson and, of course, Kevin O'Sullivan. Welcome to both of you. Uh, we've got plenty of planks to get on with. We haven't got a lot of time this week uh, because there's a few things that have held us up. However, uh, let us get on with it straight away. Dawn, I'm going to come to you first for your first plank. Straight in. I am going to go with the Parliamentary Standards Committee, yes. who are taking the lovely Betty Boothride, the former Speaker of the House, to task for failing to attend a sexual harassment uh, um, course. Um, she's 91 years Peg old. Peggy's belief, doesn't it? She was undergoing heart surgery at the time. Right. She actually, no excuse. Uh, well, I know absolutely. That's what they said. She, <laughs> she said, uh, um, I'm sorry, I would like, it's a Zoom thing, you can't go and do it, obviously. Right. She said, I, I, I can't do it, um, I'm, I'm in hospital, and, uh, um, and uh, l let's face it, why does a 91-year-old woman need to go on a politically correct, woke awareness course about sexual harassment? This is part of that nonsensical amount of money they spent, isn't it, <sighs> on... Uh, unbiased or conscious bias this training is exactly the thing doing. yeah well, exactly. The, remember this about parliament there's all, the, the, all the mps were supposed to go on unconscious right. bias training yep. uh to their credit several refused but most of them did and there's also uh, i'm not sure if it's still there but as of uh, a month or so ago there was a notice board in parliament uh, where workers and politicians could go and pin the reasons that they're the beneficiaries of white privilege. No, for this God's sake. rubbish is consuming uh, our heart of democracy and that's really worrying. Mm, that it's, really it's is. costing taxpayers a fortune as well. I mean, you know, Betty is the, the first female Speaker of the House of Commons. She's a former tiller girl. Yeah. For those too young to understand what She was a great girl. speaker as well. Yeah, absolutely brilliant. She's a better tiller girl. Didn't take didn't any rubbish from anyone. <laughs> um, actually, you know, was at the sharp end of being a showgirl back mm. in the day, dancing in a sequined knickers. Yes. You exactly how to cope with men I'm in sure. every way, shape or form. I'm sure she the did. last thing this amazing woman who is a feminist icon needs is of course on sexual harassment. What has she has forgotten is is you know, is, I know. Is, is, is also amazing. was there not a point at which like, to teach her how to not be guilty of sexual harassment? Yes. I would have <laughs> it's a safe a really, bet that a 91 year old is unlikely probably. to sexually harass yeah. I don't anyone. think she was going to sexually harass she's been there, written the book, knows everything about it but actually they are actually continuing with this investigation um, and Did they not ask her why she wasn't she able did, to appear? She, yes Mike she, yeah, actually, she, she actually filled in right. a, a note saying look I'm really sorry I'm, I'm, I'm in hospital yeah. having heart surgery no, but, I, mean, after I she can't said do that, this no, but After she said that did they not cause uh, it further after and they, say well, yeah. well how does that stop you from doing it? Well no after she said that they said okay that's fine so that is your official excuse is it yeah and she goes that's fine matter forgotten very next day uh actually no we are still investigating this it's announced she was investigating the well, baroness anyway when she said i'm undergoing heart surgery they went oh that old excuse, that old excuse. Oh, yeah. <laughs> she's 91 she's amazing she's an icon and she doesn't need this stress in her life and they're using our money to pay for but this it. is this kind of stasi overreach isn't it where they think that you know oh somebody needs telling off because they're trying to get away with not being told how to operate in life she knows how to operate in life she's been she's, doing it for 91 got years to 91 you know but it is That's also it's just bs that uh, presupposes everyone is a sinner yeah and you need to go to courses yes. to make you uh, decent people right. who no longer mm. sin no we're not all sinners we're not all sexual harassers we don't need to go to courses no. to learn You're how right, to actually. not it is becoming harass. like a religion isn't it of course it is you know how are you is. unclean you know you know, you're, ring a you're, bell if you're unclean. You're, you're a racist. You need to go to one yeah. conscious bias training. No, mm. I don't. Unconscious Which bias training is completely discredited. It's exactly absolute proven. rubbish and it doesn't work. And, and, so and I this, don't need to go no. to And this, courses. by the way, the, the, we are footing the bill of £750,000 for this. Mm. So That's absolute absolutely. nonsense, isn't it? That's so, a very good start. Yep. So our, um, they are my applause. I mean, there's of plenty the of things they could be investigating. By the way, there's plenty oh. of standards in Parliament which fall well below what Might I would be regard. Slipping slightly, uh, and as, I believe as, we're going to uh, get onto that. One, we will we? indeed get onto mm. that. But let's go to Kevin to get his first one. Uh, it is a former Post Office Chief Executive Paula Venels. Mm. Uh, who presided over uh, and just a catastrophic, massive miscarriage of justice where due to a stupid computer system called mm. Horizon, uh, 700, actually they think maybe thousands of uh, decent, honest, long-serving 
sub post office, mm. office um, masters and mistresses uh, were suddenly accused of embezzling loads of money right. out, out of the P, of the post office, uh, and they all, you know, in a really passionate way, said, "No, no, no, we just haven't done this." Right. Uh, anyway, it boiled down to seven hundred of them ended up getting kind of fully investigated. Mm. Uh, many of them were convicted. Uh, of being embezzlers, uh, thirty-nine of so them. So criminal had, charges. Yeah, yeah. yeah thirty-nine yeah. of them had their criminal charges overhauled uh, last week on Friday and are finally cleared. Their names have been cleared, but many, it's quite a few of them went to prison, yeah. including uh, one woman who was pregnant, a young mum who was pregnant, went to jail mm. for this. And Paula Venels, they say, th so far her, her punishment seems to be that she's had to apologise. Uh, she's also uh, facing the ignominy of having her CBE stripped off. Yes. She won't be is she not also like a director of a couple of supermarkets? Yeah, yeah, she's yeah. A, she's yeah. St stood Step. down from being director of uh, Morrison Supermarkets and another company called Deneur. Right. Uh, so she's lost those two jobs. She's realised she can't do that anymore. Uh, but the question I think really is, you know, you, this woman, and I don't like calling for people to be sacked or convicted. This woman deserves criminal charges. Mm. This is criminal incompetence. And right. by the way, the compensation bill, as all of these terribly wronged postmasters and postmistresses uh, quite rightly sue for compensation, uh, will be so vast that the post office may go bankrupt. Yeah. That is the colossal scale of this woman's incompetence. But it still uh, won't make up for it. But it still won't make up for it because an awful lot of the people who were prosecuted, many of them are now dead. Yeah, Some of them, of them took their own lives yes, because do, they were yeah. so terribly well, upset. Imagine having the stress yeah. of that hanging yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So this Awful. woman deserves punishment. By the way, she was also a minister for a church in St Albans. Uh, the oh, bishop nice. of the area of that, that diocese was thinking about taking away her... Uh, uh, role as a minister mm. of the church. Uh, I think she stepped down from that now. Uh, but you know, th what this boiled down to in the end was this monumentally stupid woman mm. in the face of 700 decent people uh, saying, we just did not do this. And mm. all she could go is, computer says you yeah. did. Mm. But also she, says you she did. failed the basic common sense test, didn't she? Because if you looked at all of those exactly guys right. and all of those women and you went, do you really think they did this? All exactly. at the same time? Why would they? How about the Why elephant in the room? How about there's How, the elephant uh, yeah. in the room? It may well have been a faulty computer And it was an accounting, program. it was basically an accounting error. Yeah. No, it yeah. was a computer uh, uh, system that didn't work mm. properly. It wasn't right. an accounting error, the computer And she also, she could have been less draconian about how she went after them. You know, she could have said, yeah. look, you know, we don't need to proffer, you know, well, charges against well, these I people. Think it's, I think it's a lot it, more than that. I yeah. think she should have looked at the situation and said, hang on, we've got 700 previously completely honest sub, uh, sub postmasters and mistresses uh, with, uh, you know, begging us, passion in pl mm. pl saying, we did not do mm. this. And, and uh, all she can do is, uh, our computer says you yeah. can't. But many of, them had career, uh, many of them had careers in the post office for years, yeah. decades. Well, that's the point. That's and the suddenly point. they're yeah. going to do that all at the same time right. as everyone else? That's the point. And many of them, Just of course, don't sense. have, uh, they'll have to get compensation because they don't have the business anymore. No, absolutely business is gone. This is years ago. I mean, there's hardly any, I mean, I don't think I know of any sub post office now that's still going. Yeah, but Mrs. I mean, Venables, now you have to go to a supermarket to go to the post office or you have to find a, a main post office. But the actual old fashioned sub post office where you could buy all sorts of stuff and a packet of fags that's all gone isn't it mm. i think but we've still got one yeah in six hey? years we've of running the post yeah. in six years of running the post office as chief executive uh, ms venels earned 3.7 million pounds Jesus. which she should uh, hand over that's ridiculous those she should well, give that money back yeah. what she should do i think is face a criminal yeah. prosecution yeah it's a very extraordinary situation not often should people in business face this kind of punishment mm. but i think she should uh, for being so ridiculous about m refusing to believe this massive groundswell of people, mm. decent people, so we just didn't do this, but choosing instead to say the computer must be yeah, right. Exactly uh, it's right. an outrage. It is an outrage. She deserves a lot more than losing her CBE and stopping being a director of a couple of shops and stopping being mm. a minister of a church. She deserves to face a criminal prosecution. Yeah. And she's definitely uh, a really strong contender for Plank of the Week. I think I'm very glad you put that one in because it would have been one of mine.
fine if you had not. Now, I'm going to be accused of sexism, no doubt, by the wokery, uh, but I'm going with Carrie Simon. Sexist. Sexist! Thank you very much indeed. I was expecting that a lot sooner, uh, but you came in quite quickly there. Now, some people would say it's all Boris Johnson's fault. He's the Prime Minister. He should be in charge of what's going on in Downing Street. He should know what he's doing. He should be the one that takes the flak. Why would you uh, have a go at his fiance? Well, I'll tell you why I would have a go at his fiance. I said... Um, when they first moved in together into Downing Street, I said, this will be a very bad idea indeed. You, you might did. remember a couple of years ago, I do remember. 2019, the first thing she does apparently when she gets her feet uh, under the old John Lewis coffee table, which apparently Theresa May brought in and she didn't like, was we must get rid of the John Lewis furniture nightmare. Yeah. Now, I'm sorry, if you go into probably one of the most famous residences in the world, which is number 10 Downing Street, Although I know this is number actually 11, number 11, 11, 11, which is where the flat is, because Tony Blair <laughs> actually moved Britain, it. Typical Britain, isn't it? I know. Although it never used <laughs> the to be. The best flat is not but above you know the what? Prime Minister's. It wasn't actually. It was Tony Blair that changed it, because yeah, yeah, he kids. had the kids, yeah, right? Kids. So he moved them all into number 11, gave Gordon Brown number 10. Still didn't make him happy. He was still grumpy as bloke ever in, uh, in the history of government. But um, So she decides, back in July of 2019, that she wants to refurb the flat. Now, that wouldn't be the first thing I would think of doing. And what Boris Johnson has allowed her to do is to basically derail what has been a reasonably successful prime ministerial um, you know, term of office because he's riding high in the polls. He's about 10 points ahead of Sir Keir Starmer, uh, who doesn't seem to be able to lay a glove on him. He's got um, this fantastic vaccine rollout going on, which means that there's hardly any COVID infections going on in this country. The lockdown's getting lifted. I mean, this is a guy who was riding about as high as he could possibly ride after some sticky wickets during the coronavirus. She is now dragging him back in through the mud with this ridiculous story, which is not going to go away because it turns out that in July of 2020, the Conservative Party paid £58,000 to the Cabinet Office for the cost of refurbishing the flat. Now, put to one side for a minute that it shouldn't cost fifty-eight grand to do up a flat. I don't care what sort of flat you've got, unless you're sort of decorated with gold leaf. Why the Which hell? Which is pretty close to what she's done. Well, though. why the hell? Well, she's she's in, she's she's got this uh, designer involved who, who works. Lily Little. Lily. Uh, Little. No, Lulu Little. Little sorry. Lulu Little. Lulu but who does Little. the Little. Lily collection? I've never heard of her. This is a woman who works for people Every like Mick Little Jagger. Doesn't help. Every little does not help. Mm -hmm. This is a woman who works for the likes of Mick Jagger. She works for these very expensive hotel chains in the Caribbean and in the Middle East. And then, you know, yeah. good luck to her. She makes an awful lot of money conning rich, <laughs> stupid people we into, saw you coming. into paying 10,000 quid for a couch. All right, fine. But I love the son this week who put down a list of all the things that got you could this, have got. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and you could go to Wilco's, for example, and get the same lamp that she charges six and a half grand for, for 30 quid. Now, um, aside from the fact that it's colossally tone deaf, as the woke would say, yes. to spend this kind of money during a pandemic where people are losing their livelihoods. Yeah, yeah. You know, she is obviously um, protecting Boris by, she thinks, not allowing any of this information to get out. But all she's doing is putting him further into the mire. He's now being asked the question, yeah. who gave you that money? Where did it come from? Yeah. And despite the fact that you said you didn't have any money, you've apparently paid it back. Well, how have you paid it back? And how did you, you know, there is an obvious uh, you know, elephant in the room, which is that somebody's loaned him the money to pay it back to the Tory party. We will find out eventually who that person is, because we always do, and she will have committed yeah. um, a terrible act on him, because in the end, she has caused this problem. Because, it's you know, Boris Johnson doesn't care whether you've got John Lewis, no, whether you've got John so Barnes, stupid, whether you've got Ikea furniture. I mean, he does not care, honestly. Yeah, he, he drives a 1994 Toyota people mover that mm. apparently is like, up to here in rubbish. Yeah. Uh, the guy does not care about no. that. You've only got to no. look at the state look at, of the look man. At the state oh, Katie Perry, Katie Perry, when she used to work for him at the, 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 the mayor's office in London, told me he used to come in with holes in his shoes yeah. because he's that posh that he thinks any kind of show of, of sort of, you know, I'm very rich is a bit gauche, actually. Well, exactly what I'm saying. not very rich. But she, yeah, but she's <laughs> very new money, isn't she? So she she's is, all about, she's, yeah. she's all about going, yeah, but we're rock stars now. I mean, I well, I'm afraid they're not. I had lunch with Boris several times, unfortunately, when he was mayor of London, oh, yeah. and he would regularly turn up with, I mean, this is, a, you know, in, in a director's boardroom, mm. and he would regularly turn up for a private lunch with 
stains yeah. on his trousers. That's not Once a good look. Once he had his flies undone. And oh it was dear. like soup stains Perhaps on his tie before he even started. <laughs> you never know, and John. Maybe thought you were gonna, maybe it puts you off your lunch. <laughs> he was trying you. to send you a message. I you didn't, didn't take it. I'll tell you, I didn't fancy the button mushrooms after that one. Maybe oh, thought, but so it was possible. like... Maybe he'd heard oh. Linda Lusardi was going to be there. <laughs> yeah. you know. But the thing is, I mean, it's like... so. And, and what did he think, right, when Carrie comes to him and goes, darling, I've seen this lovely armchair, a little tiny armchair, yeah. not even a big armchair, Shaped like an six oyster. Grand. Six yeah, grand. Yeah, an oyster for six grand. I mean, you know, I know the phrase is, you know, happy wife, happy life. But yeah. seriously? I know. I mean, I, mean, I mean, they're fast becoming the Harry and Meghan of British politics, the way things are going. And he doesn't need it because, you know, until this week and the end of last week, it was obviously her that decided it'd be a great idea to, to have a pop at Dominic Cummings, oh. you know, who was quite happily lying down over there with nothing much to do, just kind of eating a dog biscuit and being quite happy with his new life out of politics. But quite rightly, he decided to retaliate because if somebody starts calling you a liar, starts saying that you did certain yeah. things that you didn't yeah. do, Dominic Cummings has got a lot of stuff on there. He knows where, all the, the bodies he knows are where all the bodies are buried. Why the, would you attack a guy like that, knowing the that he would retaliate? It was the pathetic, stupid move by Boris Johnson to turn around and kind of, you know, reawaken this sleeping lion, Dominic mm. Cummings. Right. All he had to do was not point the finger right. at Dominic, and this wouldn't be happening. Exactly. But now Dominic's, you know, the drawbridge is down, and he's going at Boris. And he's coming at gun, And it's Boris's yeah. fault. He's got boxes yeah. he's got the boxes well, of stuff Yeah, but it's not Boris's well. fault. It's actually well. Carrie's fault, and that's why she she's going to be made plank of the week instead of Boris because if it wasn't for Carrie he wouldn't be in yeah, this mess yeah, he yeah. wouldn't have a row he wouldn't have had a row with Dominic Cummings because yeah. that was all down to her she didn't like him yeah. you know he wouldn't be worrying about firing people that might be leaking stuff because they're friends of hers he certainly wouldn't yeah. be having to defend borrowing 58 grand to redecorate a building that he doesn't care about yeah. Yeah, but you know yeah. what? So it's all about her the prime minister of this country should have some balls and what you learn from Boris Johnson in this is he can't even stand up to his own missus I know, and that's a tragedy. And some people might say that makes her a strong woman. Well, not if it gets him the sack, it does It makes him a weak man. If it makes him a weak man and a man who is vulnerable to attack by his critics, then she's not doing her job, which is to support him in every way, in my view. I'm sorry if you think that's a bit sexist, but there we are. Um, let's go back to your number two. Get back in your expensive kitchen, love. Yeah, right. Get the kettle on. Exactly right. I've got a couple (laughs) of... uh, I mean, maybe I'll set up a furniture company and just give her a call and go... um, Hey, darling, uh, I've got a couple of really nice looking treasure chests. How much do you think you can get them for? I'll give you two of them for 48 grand. And she'd probably say yes. Yeah, lovely. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's been designed by someone in Denmark. And it's not even nice, it's hideous. It's Who hideous. Buys it looks like, I said to Kevin earlier, it looks like uh, the, the way that you would decorate one of those um, glamping vans in yes. Glastonbury. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah What's yeah, like they're yeah, on a trip yeah. to Glastonbury? Yeah. You know, it's all stripes and flowers and, you know, some fringy things. It's like a Turkish brothel, if yeah. you ask me. Well, I'll take your word for that. Yeah, I've never been. When was the last time you were in a Turkish brothel? Just out of interest, Kev. Well, oh, sorry, this is witty. witty. <laughs> oh, 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 that's very funny, Dick Well yeah, done. Come on, you, you two. You said, you said, you said. No, no, I think, I, I think, I think we know what he means. It did make me laugh. I've never been in a Turkish brothel. you, Mike? I haven't, no. I've only ever been in one brothel in my life, and that was in southern Spain. And uh, I was there on a story before you start looking at me. No, funny. no, no, no. I've, You're I've looking been, at me, giving me one of those I've looks like, like, what are you. And, like, you wanted a little bit of downtime. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly. Into the right. local brothel. Well, no, it was. I was left. able to do one of the. I was able to do one of the things I've always wanted to do. Um, walk into a brothel, and when they said to me, "Good afternoon, sir. What would you? Um, what can we do for?" Her? I said, "I'm looking for a woman." And then I pulled the picture out of this woman that we were looking for and showed it to them. It's a good story, mm. but it's too. We haven't got enough time for me to tell it for you. Oh, I, I spent. Anyway, the night, she wasn't in I, there. I spent the night in one of the most famous brothels in the world, the Yab Yum in Amsterdam. Oh yeah. With a, 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 a lady that looked like Naomi Campbell, she was absolutely gorgeous, and British blokes were her favourite oh, yeah. punters. Got the address. Because they always fell asleep. Uh, I there went to the go. chicken ranch in Las Vegas. There you go. To do a story. Well, that's, uh, we've all been to a brothel. All Let's the move stories, on. Obviously. So, so all there the you stories. go. Let's move yeah. on. I know what I've we'll, we'll do a special like. show next week. Um, brothels we in fact, love. In fact, we're <laughs> rarely out of brothels. It, 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 it transpires. <laughs> <laughs> right, your your second uh, nominee. Right, okay, which one do I go for next? I'm going to go for ethnobotanist James Wong. Oh, Warm. yes, ethnobotanist. <laughs> ethnobotanist. <laughs> it's, a great, it's a great it's title, a thing. that. It's wonderful, isn't it? Well, I mean, I, I didn't even know that existed, did you? I no, did not, case. I did not. Um, ethnobotanist James Wong, I'm sure he's a lovely young man, was on our um, Channel 4. Hmm, not surprised by that one this week talking about how gardening is um, basically racist it yeah. has racist undertones because we use we use the word heritage and native about 
plants that mm. are grown in this country and therefore are heritage and native. Um, and that has racist undertones because they're not being used in the correct way. So gardening is not that simple pastime we all thought mm. about, you know, planting your rose bushes and all that. A couple of bulbs. It's a couple of bulbs here and there. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. You can tell I'm a huge gardener. Um, mm. And it's, yeah, it's, it is absolutely, it's, it's, we should really reconsider the language we use around gardening and actually probably apologise for doing it. He's planting the seeds of discontent. He certainly is. I like what he did there. Mm. Um, absolutely. He, he, he's been going on about he'll this reap, for months. He'll he? reap what he sows. Yeah, th this guy has been going on about this for months, hasn't he? <laughs> well, he's the old I mean, gardener's question time he, and all He that did this interview with Channel 4 News, I seem to remember, and he was talking to Krishna and Guru Murthy, who had this very odd look on his face. I wasn't sure if he was rapt. smiling <laughs> because he was rapt with what this guy was saying. Or was he just bored? Or sort of ironically smiling yeah. because he sort of knew that this was cobblers. You know, but because you know, it, it was cobblers. It's just climbing on a woke wagon to get noticed, if you ask me. Mm. That's what I, I mean. I, I, whatever field you're in, if you say it's racist, the BBC will have you on. Well, this was Channel the 4. BBC News I mean, as even worse soon than the as BBC. look at you. But he, I mean, uh, uh, James went on about this for two and a half minutes to say gardening yes. is racist. You and, can and, say that in one sentence. And his wording of the word, uh, the use of the word native was that it was in some way considered to be better. Yes. If it was native, yes. somehow, because that would say yeah. that anything coming in from overseas yeah. was somehow bad. And I mean, does he not know about pollen? Because pollen flies through the air, doesn't it? Yeah. Hey, I yeah. mean, I only did. I didn't do biology at school, but I mean, Quite I'm pretty clearly. sure. Pretty sure that the spores come from all over the place, right? Ooh, yeah, they yeah. do. They come from, right. you know, so the spores could well, come fly from, through the air. from yeah. Europe. Great distances. Flying through the yeah. air. They attach themselves to some other spores and then they create Which different plants, don't they? Which makes them bloody immigrants. They are illegal in many ways. Illegal but immigrants. We can't stop them. No. We can't stop them. No. Close the borders. Yeah, pretty Patel keeps Bring back trying control. to stop them. <laughs> but, they can't, but it can't be done. You know, it's a shocking state of affairs. So we just have to put up with it, I'm afraid. <laughs> Any case, the bloke's a complete plum. plum. He is. He's a good one. Plum, get it. See? Well done. Plum's a fruit tree. Yeah, right. Okay, give up. Daft is a brush. Ethnobotanist James Wong is uh, wrong. <laughs> we should call plane. ourselves ethno radio hosts. Yes. We? Yeah. Well, I'm. I'm not sure you're allowed to do <laughs> that. Uh, you know. I don't think we passed. Unless somehow. you could claim uh, claim heritage to the North London tribe yeah. or something or other. Yeah. You know. I guess so. Native I guess to so. North London. Well, I know. Yes. I'm from Ireland. You know. You know. That's oh well, there you go. That's it. I'll do. So your second one. Um, it is uh, the what they call it. It's the. Let's get this right. The Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences mm. in uh, Los Angeles, the Hollywood Oscars. Academy, Oscars. Uh, the people who organize the Oscars, uh, both the event and the awards, uh, go through all the films, just find out which is the which they think are the best. All of their members uh, vote on these mm. things and then you get this ceremony once a year which you know, when I was there and uh, for many, many years, was undoubtedly the well, show. Well, it dominated the, show business the city, event. didn't it? The show business. I mean, funnily enough, I was the there. The world. It was the show business yeah. event of the world. It was glitzy. It was glamorous. It was fun. I was there about two years ago because it was during, I think it was during half term um, and it was obviously before the pandemic. And I mean, I'd, I'd never been oh, the there. City and, I, and they were setting it all yeah. up in, in, in Hollywood. Mm. And it was quite a nice yeah. thing to see, to go yeah, there. I, I took my kids yeah. and we stood outside yeah. Man's Chinese Theatre and all that. The and city really literally cool. uh, draws to a halt uh, as the Oscars are uh, on the Oscar day. And then you get the big event in the afternoon and the e evening. Yes. Uh, but it's not just about LA, it's about the whole world. It was the biggest. Uh, show business event of the calendar mm. every year without fail, quite yeah. rightly. Um, so this year, the 93rd Oscars uh, uh, got the worst TV ratings in the history of the event. Uh, now, you might say, well, that's because over the past year, it's been uh, affected by the film industry has been ruined by the COVID crisis. Well, it has and it hasn't. These films uh, that were up for grabs uh, at this year's Oscars were mostly made before the yeah. crisis. Uh, I haven't heard of most of them, fact, no, fact, no one's seen them, that's a problem. And in no. fact, although it's fair to say that uh, the studios didn't release massive blockbusters, uh, but they are, enough films were released uh, on uh, the streaming services for it to be a perfectly okay yeah. year. Uh, but uh, what uh, we ended up with was this kind of woke awards. Uh, you know, where a film the about Wexters. a homeless lady in the Midwest living in a van <laughs> wins best film. Yeah. Uh, the actress who played that homeless person 
Frances McDormand gets Best Actress. Uh, we've got, of course, world famous Yu Yong Yuan. Uh, she won Best Supporting a Actress for that uh, extremely well known film, Minari. Uh, uh, we've got uh, some Best Supporting actr Actor. What's that about? Any idea? Who cares? <laughs> uh, we, uh, actually, I do. It's Very about. Car chases, it, it is about an immigrant Japanese family okay. trying to get to grips with. Why the, do they have to do this? Bit, well, and then you've got Judas and the Black Messiah. That one, Daniel uh, Kahuya. Uh, he's British, but that one in Best Supporting yeah. Actor. Anyway, and on and on it went. Uh, costume design: Ma Rainey's Black Bottom, uh, and that so on and rude, so off. Though. So this this uh, Oscar roll call was full of films that no one had heard. Yeah. Now the best film, Nomad, uh, Nomadland, uh, it uh, secured $2.6 million at the box office. Now, uh, if a film does not make $30 million in its first weekend, it is a flop. Yeah. This is a commercial uh, flop. Uh, and nobody knows what the film is. So what did they decide to do at these Oscars? Hey, that's a good idea. We've got all these films that no one's seen. Let's get rid of that thing of showing clips. They didn't oh. show you any clips. That no was clips. Thing. I mean, they put the best picture award, which is the big award of the night, halfway through mm. the ceremony. They didn't put best actor at towards the end because, in their view, the wrong person mm. got it. White, uptight, and out of sight, Sir Anthony Hopkins, and they wanted uh, the late great Chadwell Boseman, Chadwick Boseman well to win yeah. for his part in, in a superhero movie uh, and you know so it was confusing it was without uh, joy it was without any creative interest uh, and they took all the uh, jeopardy out of it by putting all the blue right. walls in the middle it was useless absolutely useless it lost 58 percent of its audience from last year and by the way last year's oscars the worst ratings in the history well, of maybe the ceremony. The, maybe these things this year, 58% down. I think they are. And now the uh, Motion Picture Academy gets uh, $75 million a year from the ABC TV network. That's the only money it really mm. gets. That's how it survives. Uh, ABC are going, we're not showing this rubbish anymore. So it's possible, it's v highly possible, uh, that due to its own wokeness, its woke idiocy, uh, the Motion Picture Academy is going to go out of business and there won't be any Oscars next year. Yeah, that's well, like I mean, paying the 10 million yeah, people yeah, yeah. that watch this 75. Yet, yet another, yet another organisation, a commercial enterprise that sees its own virtue signalling as more important yeah. than the commercial realities of the e arena it operates in. Uh, for In order to salute themselves, it's destroying themselves. Mm. It's absolutely ridiculous. It, I mean, it was three hours of virtue backslapping and being lectured to by people dripping in millions yeah, yeah. of pounds worth Telling of Telling you about how they're oppressed. And yeah. how impressed yeah, they where's were. the showbiz? Where's what the fun? victims they were. Yeah. Yeah. Where's the showbiz? Where's the fun? Uh, you know, it, it, showbiz should be about entertainment. Uh, it is now a film, theatre, television. Most of it is now being devoted to identity politics, trans rights, racism. You know, all, I'm sure, very important issues, but very very, very dull yes. and boring if you're going to pack it full of pack those but also they're all doing the same films. thing they're all doing the same shtick it's it, not it is interesting all the same thing, you know absolutely. if there was one or two films like that great if there was two or three films about something else also yeah. great but to do it all yeah. the same it's just tedious well, think it's of the customers tedious. think of the public well, this is the thing, stop isn't it? stop venerating yourself as the producer the director yeah. or the actor or the writer mm. and think of the audience so what, what you For really God's want sake. at the moment though is 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 glamour and glitz and entertainment well, people and want humor. escapism but don't worry i've got the answer for you if you want Want escapism and you want to have a good laugh, you know what you've got to do? Join Extinction Rebellion. Yeah, uh, that's my uh, next. Who plank. said there's no good comedy? Yeah, who on said the there's telly? no good comedy on the telly? Have you right? seen these idiots smashing windows? Smashing Hilarious. windows down at Canary Wharf because you know the big banks are really ruining the planet. Yeah. Yeah, it's all yeah. terrible, right? Um, so they're standing there hammering uh, with chisels uh, to try and break <laughs> break the glass. And, and singing did. strange songs. Oh God! And then worse than that, though, was their next trick. They decided to dump some coal outside of Lloyd's yes. of London. But they didn't dump real coal, because no. that would be wrong. No. So they dumped fake coal. Yes. But it was literally the worst dumping of anything. It was a little pile, not much bigger than about that, in the middle of a street. 
right? Um, uh, which they also used a pickup truck, which yes. was powered by fossil fuel it to was. get there, I'm afraid. And, and, yeah, and these are the people that are trying to encourage everybody to cycle into cities. Yes. So why didn't they cycle with Why didn't they cycle with coal? one lump of coal? Yeah, I know. They could have done it 25 right, times. Exactly. I know it's not as effective <laughs> and probably doesn't get quite as big a well, coverage. It's a long way news. to cycle from Tunbridge Wells from, well, from your million pound house. A lot of these well, people seem to come a lot of these house. people yeah. seem to come from Stroud. There was that court case earlier in the week yeah. uh, where the ones who'd beaten up uh, Shell Oil uh, mm. all got let off by a jury, even though the judge said in the case that they had committed criminal damage and that they had intent to commit mm -hmm. damage and that they should be sentenced to something mm -hmm. quite severe. Unfortunately, they obviously must have got a jury of their peers who were also all from Stroud, you know, with funny hats on and funny beards. And they all got let off. But worse than that, right, this is now seeping out all over the country. Do you know, for example, that up in Trent Bridge, there's a whole bunch of them there now. They've gone on a camp. Trent Bridge. Trent Bridge. No. Now, what I don't know next? what is going on in Nottingham, right? But for some reason, right, they've t set up tents and banners along the River Trent near Trent Bridge, and they're planning to stay there until Nottingham County Council do what they want. And do you know what they want them to do? Go on. Uh. They want them to um, refuse to approve the proposed incinerator at Ratcliffe mm. on Saw, oh, um, yeah, yeah. and they want them to support the Climate and Ecological Emergency Bill uh, and they also want them to stop investing their pension funds in the fossil fuel industry. And until such time as they do all that, they'll be stinking out the place in their horrible, crappy tents uh, with their horrible, crappy green slime that they drink um, and their horrible, crappy, smelly habits. But you yeah. know, but they, they do they do excuse themselves the women taking part by wearing suffragette colours of purple. Yeah, because they're green. just like the suffragettes, aren't they? Because they're just like the suffragettes. Similar. And, yeah, and some of them, one of their um, insufferable one, suffragettes. One of the young men involved in this particular protest, the one in Canary Wharf, tried to give me a lecture on what it was like to be a feminist. Oh really? And this was a little boy with bum fluff around his face. Oh, who was, oh sweet. Straight out of university. It's quite sweet, isn't it? Yeah. You should give him a shove. I, but then, of course, you'd get arrested. You get locked up for the rest of your tempted. life. Sorely tempted. Yeah. They are such idiots, aren't oh, they? Yeah, and also, they're, they're, they're nearly all white and middle class. Oh, terribly white and middle class. Are they hideously white and middle class? They are totally white and middle class. There is simply nothing else going on. Right, your number three. Me? Yes, My gosh, we again. are flying past. I we wonder are. who's got a very important appointment at the end of this. Well, it's not so much that we're flying <laughs> past, it's just that the production team were a bit late in kicking us off. <laughs> right, um, okay. And we've already been going for half an hour, by the way. Yeah. Oh my God, it, it, time flies when you're having yes. fun. Right, okay, well, this is the charity who um, are called, my, 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 mine's gone blank. Uh, the charity, Leonard Cheshire. Oh, yes. Who says we can't use a normal descriptive words such as able-bodied, epileptic, or blind anymore because they are, you've got it, offensive. Of course they yeah. are. So guide, <laughs> guide dogs for the blind are in serious trouble. Now, I mean, it's bad news for uh, blind if, pew, if, isn't it? What, if, what is him? wrong? So, was he not Treasure Island? Blind I, pew. Yeah, I, yeah. So what do you call him now? That, 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 uh, Sight impaired that pew. Nursery rhyme, three blind mice. Yeah, you can't be doing that. Can't do that, no. Three visually mice. impaired mice. See <laughs> how the <laughs> three visually impaired <laughs> mice. <laughs> so we have to. We have no, no, they so can't even mention that they no. might be visually impaired. No. Three, three mice. <laughs> See <laughs> how they. <laughs> so you have to use it rather than blind now that it's visually impaired, right? Yes. Okay, well, one of my neighbours is blind, has been blind since birth, right? right? Not visually impaired. No. Because blind. He's blind. Well, visually impaired means your vision's impaired. Impaired. I haven't got any vision if you're blind. Vision, so no. therefore he is blind. And he got more annoyed about this than even we do, mm. which takes some doing. Well, most but people who are actually blind don't mind people it's, saying, it's not offensive. are you blind? No. And also, I spoke to somebody today who rang in who said that he was blind, didn't mind being called blind. I said, also, why would it be in any way considered to be offensive, um, offensive I or I never even why, does it, it. why should anyone think any less of you because you're blind? It's almost like they feel like they have to tell everyone that there's something wrong with you. It's like, you know? It's like there is nothing, there's nothing wrong with people that are blind. They also, have... epileptic, you're not allowed to say, apparently, well, according to this lot. But well, if you suffer from epilepsy, Surely you're an epileptic, aren't yes. you? Yes. Well, yes. I would have thought so. How I else do you describe? How are you supposed to describe epilepsy? I don't know. No, they didn't they explain it. Call the epileptics blind. Call the blind you people could, epileptic. But that would be confusing. But that's the other thing. They also say that you can't say anyone suffers from anything. So you can't suffer from epilepsy, or suffer because you're an epileptic. So right. I don't know where you go I love with that. that guy right. called your show this morning. Yeah. He said. I, I don't mind being called blind because I can't see. I can't see. I am blind. Yeah, <laughs> well, absolutely. You end up having these conversations where you're going, this should not be controversial. <laughs> this really should not be something that people are arguing about, yeah. right? Yeah. If you can't see because you've lost your sight, you're blind. Blind. Yeah. Aren't you? Yeah. It's, and, and why are they so Also, what about that song? 
I was blind, but now I can see. There's, yeah. a, there's a new... Uh, but you can't. No, you're visually impaired, so but now, now you I, can... But you can't. N now you're not visually impaired, because it's I was, I offensive. was visually impaired, and now I'm not. It's not no. such a good line. No, there's, there's it doesn't work. There's a new publication work. coming out called... Uh, uh, it's called The Journal of Controversial Ideas, mm. and it's by a load of academics, and he is two of them, by the way. It's right. a good project. And they are going to uh, propose sort of debating points that you can't say these days. Right. They're going to daringly go where no work person dares to tread. And, uh, for example, they're, they're going to write a piece about um, uh, the, the controversial proposition uh, that there are two genders and not a hundred What? No. Why is that controversial? I, I'm well, sorry. I can't. Because there are people in court. There are people in court currently I can't believe you just having said to that. defend themselves from having said exactly that. I know. Yeah. Right? The controversial yeah. proposition oh, yeah. is that there are more than two right. generals. That genera, genders. That's what should be controversial. Mm. It isn't controversial to say there are two. It's controversial to say there are 107. Mm. And I'll tell you why. Because there aren't 107 no. genders. Exactly right. Mm. Now, uh, we're running out of time even more rapidly now. So your final one, uh, Kevin. Yeah, well, it is, uh, well, it's the football world here in England. Oh, yes. Uh, England football we got now. into trouble with the football Again, last week. It, 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 it's, been there. It's, yeah. it's sort of basically everyone it's the football association the premier league english football league fa women's super league fa women's championship pfa the professional football association and the kick it out organization and they uh are, are, i mean we're stealing ourselves because i just don't know how, how i'm going to cope uh, they have <laughs> sensationally announced that on friday for four whole days they're not going to post anything on social media in order to stop racism that'll teach that'll them certainly that'll fix it, won't teach it? them what a useless empty gesture. what do you mean so no more of those um that was never offside yeah. tweets well yeah uh, uh, it w it'll be oh, uh, bloody it, var i don't it won't be easy to cope without these uh, semi-literate tweets of bad spelling abysmal grammar childlike sentence construction that's enough about your own tweets uh, what about the football that. ones oh it's another one of your jokes <laughs> can you just let me know when you're going to do a joke so yeah. i don't know when to sort of at least try to no, smile. it's the only time she looks at uh, you. Least, uh, yeah, that's how you can tell yeah, at least i'll try to smile you yeah, know what on. i mean no just, don't it's just worse. Alert, alert them to me uh, anyway, uh, so they, they uh, are not only uh, going to pursue this empty gesture, uh, and by the way, uh, this will come after an entire season of the players all taking the knee before oh, yeah. every match, so we know that that hasn't worked. Yeah. That has absolutely right. not worked. So does that mean they're going so to stop doing stop that? So can we stop doing then? it? I mean, was it like a couple of weeks ago when uh, Prince Philip's funeral was on and all the uh, players had to take the, uh, take the knee, then they had to do a minute silence because of Prince Philip. <laughs> I thought, is the game ever going to start? No. Yeah. No, no, it's it's like a load of rituals oh, first. No. But the Caribou Cup did the same this weekend, oh, didn't no, it? It's it like, you know, taking cool. the knee. And then you had to love the NHS. It's like, what? Well, well who why doesn't actually support the NHS? Yeah. But yeah, well, they I were don't. all. It was. It was all. I, it was no, support I the support NHS, the NHS so. by paying my taxes. I don't expect well, yeah, exactly. to have to be a lot better. But it's yeah. like so I just I. want to watch a football match and enjoy yeah. a football match. I don't want the lectures. So anyway, this is. So this who are you actually calling a blank? Well, uh, you've all got to pick. It does go on. So just football. Well, I'm no. I'm I'm calling the Premier League, the Football Association. Uh, well, let's say the, uh, the FA Women's Super League, the FA Women's Championship, and the Professional Footballers Association. <laughs> I can't get that in one you line. Bloody finish. All right, okay. Say let's football. say football. The or fo footballers. Football Association and the Premier League uh, for this ludicrous empty gesture of this not never tweeting for four days, following the ludicrous <sighs> empty out. gesture of taking the knee for a season. Yeah. That didn't work. And also, by the way, they have spent a fortune this weekend taking double spread page spread adverts in every national newspaper huge banner adverts yeah. to announce we're not racist right oh, well no. that's good apart from the fact the far because they are run by a bunch of old white blokes well it doesn't make them racist doesn't racist make them and racist. sexist well all right listen i'm really glad that you guys picked up on when i said you know we're running out of time here anyway because <laughs> uh, <laughs> listen here we go i'm gonna go for my final one because we really are running oh out of time God, Jeff, the Archbishop of Canterbury <laughs> is making another appearance. Now, he's been in it a few times, old Welby, Wokeby as we call him now, because his latest ludicrous interjection, which was never asked for, uh, is into the lobbying row, right? He's being interviewed by somebody about what he thinks about the political world in which we live, of which he is a part. And do you know what he said? Uh, he thinks that basically what we should do uh, is introduce more forgiveness and compassion to politicians. What? So particularly when it comes what? to things that they've got wrong, 
we should admit that we are all failing. Uh, we should admit that we are all, you know, uh, sinners, effectively. Oh. And uh, if anyone gets into trouble because they've done something wrong and possibly illegal uh, in the world of politics, we should just forgive them uh, and we should turn the other cheek and we should have compassion for them, even though they're paid by the public purse, even though they're paid by our taxes, even though some of them are sleazy slime balls. But apparently that's all right with the Archbishop of Canterbury. Right. He's fine with that. No, you have to forgive. He's OK Mike, with you that. You have to forgive. Turn the other cheek. Pay more tax. You take the plank out of your own eye first, Justin. Yeah, the plank mm. is right. Absolutely. So he's mm. my plank. So uh, we are now, we're also, uh, well, I should say, by the way, I forgot to mention, Harry and Meghan carried over that as ever. Of course, I mean, it's uh, just uh, always red, really. Uh, course, uh, but we always like to say, well, yeah. you know, actually one week we didn't carry them over because uh, for some reason they didn't, uh, they, they didn't make an appearance, but they're still in the top, uh, they're still top of the uh, planks of the well, year so updating, far. They're updating that book, they update, they? They're updating the mm. book, which I thought puts them in it this week because it means that they've got to do an extra chapter to cover the Oprah interview. View, oh. uh, and also, of course, Harry's visit to the UK uh, and the rever and the, uh, the reverberations from that visit to Prince Philip's funeral. I bet the Queen's really looking forward to I that. I bet she is, yeah. yeah. Bless really her. good of them to make sure. Because yeah. the thing is, we don't want to miss a thing with these two, do we? No, okay. Right, now, so <laughs> let's get down to it. So we've got to get down from nine to three. Um, do you want to pick Kevin's this week, Dawn? Kev, remind me who you've said. I lost uh, a little uh, lift uh, halfway it was through. Pa Paula. <laughs> Uh, Paula, what was the Post name? office uh, bird. Yeah, Paula Venels, yeah. the post office chief executive. Uh, and then the motion, the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences for ruining the Oscars, possibly forever. Yeah. And finally, uh, let's say let's call it the world of football. Yeah. The crazy world of British football or English football. Right, I'm going to go for the Oscars. Boom, there you go. Nice. Oscars, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, all right. That's good. All right, so uh, Kevin, you want to pick mine? Yep. Carrie Simons, Extinction Rebellion. Uh, the Archbishop of Canterbury. Well, um, I really don't want to s uh, support your abject sexism about Carrie Simons, so I'm going no. to say Carrie Simons. Very good. Well played. It's <laughs> you be. sexist pigs of Or is yeah. it Simmons? Yeah, well, whatever it is, she's, she's a plank. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she's a plank. <laughs> Carrie Plank. Right. Carrie so Antoinette. now, Dawn, I'm going to pick yours. Right, OK, we have the um, uh, Parliamentary Ethics Committee for taking Betty Boothroyd to task. Yeah. We have the charity, Lena Cheshire, who are actually quite a good charity apart from this, yeah. you know, over well, the whole... Well, they probably were. You can't say the blind thing. Yeah. And we have... Um, Can you say the blind leading the blind? The blind leading well, the blind. One-eyed <laughs> one one -eyed exactly man in the land of the blind. Yeah. It's, it sums it short. Or how about one-eyed man in the land of the, yeah. uh, the visually impaired? No, it's so not quite right. It's just not working. The blind leading the blind as a phrase becomes... about blind faith? The leading. They were a great band. Visually impaired faith. Blind faith. Blind, yeah. They were super band, weren't they? They were great. Cream and all Yeah, that. absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Steve finally, Winwood. look, do you want to get a move on? Or no, what? I'm talking about Yeah, I've got to get a haircut okay. soon. Right. Uh, I'll be in there sometime. Oh. <laughs> Ethnobotanist oh, yeah. James Wong was yes. my last one. Yeah, I think... Over I think, gardening being racist. I think we're going to go with James Wong. Ethnobotanist. Just for being an ethnobotanist. Just for being an ethnobotanist. I mean, that'll do for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, so, gardening. So we now have the Oscars, uh, Carrie Simons and James Wong. It can't be Carrie, isn't it? My feeling is it has to be Carrie, given the week we are I think because in. of this week, it got, absolutely yeah, has to be. I guess so. I mean, yeah, imagine if by I the don't... time the end of this week arrives, the name of the man who gave the 58,000 is out. Yeah. It turns it's... out to be somebody slightly like the, um, I don't know, Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia. Oh, that'd be a what good What happens one. then? Yeah. It's Carrie Antoinette. She will be the deputy prime minister. Carrie Antoinette. Absolutely no right. Should we go with... Um, James Wong is it two, or should we go with Oscars? Oscars. 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 Oscars, yeah, right. lectures, no. And then Just James Wong, films. ethnobotanist coming in at number three. Well, I think that's, <laughs> I think that's a pretty good, uh, that's a pretty yeah. good list. Yeah. I think we've done well, and we've also done it within time. All I've got to do now is run uh, to the hairdressers. And Which would be the most entertaining bit of the show, A minute Mike and a half, running. you're not allowed to film that, by the way. Uh, plank of the week is, I'm afraid, uh, Carrie Antoinette, Carrie Simons. Well done, <laughs> Carrie. We'll see you next time. <laughs>